Right, I think it's about half past. So ICT, are you ready to start recording? Oh, she started. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, we've started. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thanks everyone for attending this hybrid meeting to the Government's uh, Committee on Wednesday the 25th of November 2020. We've got some members in the Lancastrian suite, some joining from home and members of public are welcome to observe from the Committee Room 1 where the meeting is being streamed. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Councillor Deborah Platt. Hello. Um, and I'm the Chair of this Committee. Councillor Tony G is Vice Chair. Say hello, Tony. Hello, everybody. Hello, Tony. Um, please note this is a Teams meeting, it's being recorded and the video stream will be um, uploaded to YouTube later um, this afternoon. For each item, I will invite members to use the raise the hand function on your iPad uh, to make any comments to ensure that each member has the opportunity to speak and that they're not speaking over each other. When speaking, please reference the paragraph number to enable everyone to follow you. Please mute your microphone and video feed when you're not speaking. If the technology fails, I will adjourn the meeting for a few minutes and try to resolve the issue. Not personally, but <laughs> this is <laughs> and if this is not possible, a new date will be um, arranged. Please, can I ask all members to confirm that they can hear and speak before meeting begins? Um, I'll call your name out. Tony G. Can hear you loud and clear. Mark Clifford. Uh, present Chair. Okay. Jean Cronshaw. Present Chair. Thank you. Gordon France. Present Chair. Thank you. Yvonne Hargreaves. I'm here Chair. Kim Snape. Present Chair. Hi. And Charlotte Finch, are you there, the independent member? Charlotte, yes, Charlotte Finch. Yes, Deb, yeah. yes, I'm here. Thank you, Chair. Fitch, sorry about that. I can't read. That's okay. <laughs> I've got council. I've got uh, apologies from Councillor Roylees and Peter Ripley. Is that right? Any more? Yes, thanks, Chair. That's great. Okay, so we'll go to item one: minutes of the meeting of the sixteenth of September of the Governance Committee. Were there any issues that anybody wanted to raise uh, regarding the accuracy? If not, Madam Chairman, move that we. Uh... I move the report. Thanks, Tony. Any anybody second in? Second in. I'll second that. Gordon. Yeah. Gordon first. Yeah, got a few of those, and uh, I, I'm presuming everybody's agreeing with that. If anybody's against, please shout up. Silence, lovely. Those meetings are approved. Uh, sorry, those minutes are approved for the meeting. And number two, declarations of any interest. M members are reminded of their responsibility to dec declare any pecuniary interest in respect of matters contained on the agenda. Um, does anybody want to raise an interest now? No, you can raise an interest later if it crops up, if you think that uh, that you should. Thanks very much. Number three, Treasury Management Activity Mid-Year Review 2021, pages 7 to 24, and uh, to receive and consider the report of the Chief Finance Officer. Are you there, Gary? There you are. <laughs> Well, you're on you're on mute, but he's trying to say something. Yeah, it's not me anymore, uh, Deborah. It's James and uh, Tony. Ooh. I think it's going to do this report. Beg your pardon, Tony. They give me a day off. <laughs> yeah, well, a well, there's, nothing off. To, there's nothing to do on Treasury at the moment. <laughs> so you don't need a day off. <laughs> right. So we have got Tony Ferber. Please, are you there? Oh yes, you are. You're on mute, Tony. I know you're trying to say something. Right. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, all I, to I'm you. here now. I'm here. Yes, Thank you, you are. Chair. Thank you. Um, okay. Well, it's um, this. It is a relatively straightforward uh, report, Chair. Um, it does have one or two unusual features, but nothing unexpected. Uh, the unusual features are, are simply a feature of um, the somewhat unusual times that we're currently in. If we go to well, on page, it's page seven of. Um, the agenda papers, the um, the position is summarised there in paragraphs three, two to seven. Uh, the main headline figure is um, that we have achieved a return on our investments in the first half of the year of a massive 0.16%. And um, yeah, I, I, I never really thought I would be producing a
investments um, quite that low. Um, however, uh, the further unusual feature is uh, that's actually well in excess of um, of the target rate. Of course, the, the, the rates available have just dropped through the floor in March and Link's currently recommended target rate is 0.1%. So we've actually comfortably beaten it. Um, we can't use the usual LIBID plus 15% because at the moment LIBID is itself a negative figure. Yeah. And I hope, hope we continue to do rather better than that. Um, the average daily balance likewise is really high, about twice what we would expect it to be. That is a function of um, the effects on the cash flow of um, the response to um, the COVID pandemic, where there, there's been a great deal of money flowing through the council's accounts, and we have had to take steps, especially just at the end of March, beginning of April, to ensure that the, pack, the cash flows stayed positive. On the borrowing side, there hasn't um, there hasn't been any new borrowing in the first half of the year, but there wasn't actually um, any any planned. Uh, PWLB rates themselves have uh, have gone down, not as drastically as um, investment rates have. For example, the 50 year rate was originally forecast at 3.1 percent for this year. It actually stands. Well, the current forecast is 2.3 percent and the base rate itself is once again at that massive 0.10 percent. And that's forecast to stay unchanged um, actually for at least two and a half years. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Tony. Has um, anybody got any questions for Tony? Well, I would like it. Um, Tony, yeah. Tony, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Have we got any debt which we're paying more interest than um, we can currently get? And if we have, could we um, pay off those debts and borrow the money at 0.16%? Uh, we don't. I mean, all all of the current borrowings now are for for fixed terms. Um, so that uh, that won't be changing. And there's no, there's no the, the discount and premium rates have not moved in any in any way such that would um, would allow us to pay off existing debt, I'm, I'm afraid. Um, <laughs> I fear the PWLB <laughs> are a step ahead of us on, yeah. um, on, on, on that one. Um, yeah. What, um, I mean, it, does, it's, it has a curious effect on perhaps the rest of the year because our forecasts do still indicate that we will have a borrowing requirement later on in the year the forecasts are far more volatile than they usually are just now and you know there's a lot of variables will go into that uh, if if it does arise um then yes you, you know we could still be in we could be in a curious position where we do have funds available that we might substitute some of the borrowing but at the same time, we have to balance that again. The current PWLB rates, although they haven't dropped as much as the investment rates, they are low. And it might be a case of, well, we might as well borrow this February, March, because we think it's going to cost us more if we do it, say, when it comes to August, September. Mm -hmm. Okay, turn. Okay. Keep your, keep your eye on the ball then. <laughs> I will. Sounds like I he will. is. <laughs> Does anybody else have any more questions? Well, I'd like to. Yeah, I would like yeah. to move the report then. Well, uh, we're just noting, so that's okay. If you Noted, want to move yeah. on. Uh, so, for item four, it's audit findings report by the external auditors, Grant Thornton. Who have we got on today? Chair, hello, it's Barry Hi. Morrison from Grant Hi, Thornton. Yeah. Hello there. Um, so, Chair, unfortunately, we're not able to bring the audit findings report to this uh, committee meeting um, because we haven't really started the audit yet. And I'll uh, move straight to agenda item five if I can. That 
provides okay. progress report. OK, so agenda item five is audit progress. Uh, that's page 29 to 46. So back, back over to Barry. Yeah. Thank you very much, Chair. So, Chair, as we set out there on um, the progress at November 2020 uh, page, um, we're still waiting for um, a set of financial statements that officers um, have confidence in before we're able to commence our, our audit work. Um, that relates both to the financial statements and in relation to the value for money work. There are a number of queries that are still outstanding from uh, the planning inquiries that we made earlier in the year. Um, and once we receive that information, then we'll be able to uh, commence the, the audit in earnest. Um, I have had a conversation with your uh, finance officers and I'm assured that we should get a statement of account either just this side of Christmas um, or if not very early in the new year. So it's at that point that we will then start to deliver the audit. Chair, the rest of the report then just goes uh, through um, some updates which we may think uh, that the council and members may be interested in. Um, I apologise for the COVID-19 update uh, element of it. This part of the report was written before uh, the second lockdown that we've gone in, um, but I think some of the information included within there, particularly around scenario two and the second wave, um, may be of interest and is, is of relevance to the council. We've also included some other sector updates in there, including uh, the new value for money work that's been set out by the uh, National Audit Office, and the outcomes of the uh, Redmond review and a couple of other reports as well, which may be of interest. Chair, happy to take any questions on the progress report or any of the other sector updates. Thank you, Barry. Does anybody have any questions? Tony, you sound no, poised. No, no, not poised. Uh, I'll <laughs> wait till uh, we get a fuller report later on in the year. Uh, when? Anybody else? It might be next year. It will be next year. <laughs> well, it will be now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the next financial year. Okay. And I won't be on then, will I? <laughs> Is that Jean shouting up? Have you got a question, Jean? No, I'm just laughing at Tony. <laughs> oh, right. No problem. <laughs> OK. Right, OK, so if, if we've got no I move uh, that we, Yeah, I, I move that, that we receive the report. We'll know Sorry, Chair. I think James, James Thompson's got his hand up. Sorry, oh. Chair. Sorry, James. I didn't see that. Uh, that's no problem. <clears throat> Thanks, Chair. So I just thought I'd update um, the committee on where we're up to with the audit. Uh, so as Barry said, we've not been able to provide the uh, draft statement of accounts uh, for uh, grant funds to then carry out the audit. This is exclusively because of issues we've had with the evaluation of our assets, something that's very important for uh, uh, auditors to make sure that our assets are valued every year. Um, and we have now received the final valuations and the report that goes with it. And we are now able to close off the accounts. Uh, we are now going to gener start generating uh, the draft accounts, um, but they won't be ready for the 30th of November. So we will be putting something on the website explaining that we haven't done this in time, but we are getting on with it. Uh, we hope to then uh, begin, well, and hopefully finalise the audit queries, or providing information to auditors uh, post Christmas, and then finalise the audit, obviously in discussions with Barry, uh, certainly before the, uh, the start of the new financial year, but hopefully around February time, because what we don't want to do is run two uh, audits of two separate financial years at the same time. Uh, it's been a it's been a tough year in terms of <laughs> pulling this together, uh, uh, but we are going to put more resources into answering any audit queries and, and getting it all closed off as fast as we can. So, okay, thanks, James. Uh, any further questions before we yeah. note that? Yep, I can't find on. my little hand to put it up. Um, oh, could, I ask, <laughs> could I ask James, um, are we OK with any legal requirements regarding time? I know we're living in, it's not a criticism, but we're living in a kind of very difficult time at the moment. And are there any legal time frames we should meet, which we're not going to meet? Well, we are required um, to, to at least um, publicise that we're not going to meet the deadline uh, but there's no uh, on the website there's no financial implications for that it's just that we'll be added to, to quite a long list i think this year of accounts yeah. that have not met uh, that deadline uh, yeah. but certainly like i said we want to get it dealt with as soon as possible right thank you very much james 
Okay, so are we okay to note that report, everyone? Silence is golden. Yes. Item six. I <laughs> agree. <laughs> anyway, I'll take it as a positive, though. Um, yeah, thank you. Both. You're in a good mood today, Deborah. <laughs> I'm always in a good mood. When am I not in a good mood, Tony? When you're electioneering <laughs> against my brother. <laughs> I'm honest. Oh. Uh, I think it's your brother that's grumpy, not me. So, oh, well, item six, try. moving on, Tony. <laughs> Internal audit. <laughs> Annual plan, progress report, April to October. And this is Chris Moisty because I remember that title being so long on Monday. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, Chair, it is <laughs> I. Um, you'll probably know from the report itself, I've, met, I've abridged it to internal audit update. Um, so that's better. Uh, which, which just makes it a bit, it rolls off the tongue a bit easier anyway. Um, this Generally, you would be receiving that update of the work undertaken um, against audit plan. So this would generally be the report where you'd uh, receive um, the internal audit plan and uh, a record of the time spent on each audit and where we're up to with each and every one of them. Um, I explain why in the body of the report, um, it's a slightly different presentation um, this year. Um, I, I'm reluctant to blame it, uh, but I will do. Um, but COVID has certainly caused uh, issues uh, for the delivery of the audit plan this year. Um, as members may recall, I outlined uh, the last meeting, um, the, the staffing challenges and capacity issues that have been in audit um, this uh, municipal year, this financial year, um, and the um, activities that have been undertaken by the internal audit team to support um, the COVID response and the community hub work, so actually to directly support residents rather than undertaking uh, internal audit work. Um, there were good reasons for that, not primarily obviously supporting residents uh, in need, um, but delivery of actual audit work uh, when teams uh, were absent from the office or diverted onto other tasks themselves uh, was, um, if not challenge, well, if not impossible, certainly very, very challenging. Um, so it wasn't felt a, a, as much of a priority to, to deliver some of those uh, items of work. Um, you, members will also remember uh, that um, the, the team um, lost their uh, manager uh, at the end of June uh, as that temporary contract came to a conclusion. Um, and in September, uh, we appointed a senior uh, auditor, an interim senior auditor, to support the team pending uh, a restructure and some recruitment. Uh, just a quick update uh, on the staffing issues. Um, the posts of service lead for um, audit and risk and the permanent senior auditor um, post closed on Friday last week uh, and we have received a reasonable response to those adverts uh, and um, interviews should be taking place in the next couple of weeks with a view to filling uh, those posts. So hopefully we'll have a, a staffed um, service uh, in readiness for the next financial year. I have included um, a copy of the up-to-date internal audit plan at the appendix, but also at paragraph 11 of the report, which is on pay agenda page 50, there is a text uh, progress update um, against plan. Um, members will recall that very little against the audit plan had been delivered uh, when we last met. Um, I'm pleased to say that in a relatively short period of time, the internal audit team um, have delivered a significant amount of work. Um, this is divided in the text between work delivered towards shared services, so that's um, where the um, audit work can be shared between the two organisations. So um, this is to do with things like these small business grants, um, where both organisations um, were supporting uh, COVID works, um, but there are also um, common uh, audits such as the council tax, non-domestic rates and housing benefits audit work, and you'll see that there's a number of these um, audits that have now been completed. In relation to the Chorley specific work, um, the NFI data matching review, um, that, that work's actually just been suspended um, just for a while while um, it, it, the uh, NFI, um, yeah, uh, well, pending uh, getting some further information from the Cabinet Office, um, which we're expecting uh, in February. Um, but you'll note that there are a series of uh, audits that have now uh, been completed with just uh, the, um, the peer review of the uh, audit document to be undertaken before the final version is to be issued to the teams. So as I say, in a relatively short period of time since the, um, the ending of the last lockdown, quite a lot of audit work has actually been delivered uh, by the team. Um, 
it is unlikely we will deliver uh, the full extent of the internal audit plan. Um, the, uh, <laughs> the, the subsequent lockdown to now um, has obviously impacted on um, the likelihood of that delivery and the continuing um, tier two, tier three status of uh, the area and the impact that has on teams and their ability to cooperate with audits will also um, impact on it. Looking forward, um, the the opportunities are, are presented by appointing a new um, service lead into the role is that um, there will be a, a an improved structure to the presentation of information to governance committee. Um, I'm laughing to myself only because I do apologise, committee. This is, I fully accept that whilst we're in difficult times, um, the reporting on progress against audit uh, audit plan has not been acceptable. Um, what I will uh, commit to, to ensure is that subject to getting the post filled, you will get a um, full details of the audit plan that will be deliverable for next year provided we don't get any further um, external intervention shall we say from uh, uncontrollable areas um, it is expected that uncompleted audits from this year will be carried forward into the next year's audit plan but we will not put that over capacity and we will ensure that the audit plan presented will be capable of delivery and i'm happy to take any questions chair Thanks, Chris. Has anybody got any questions for Chris? Ooh. Again, silence is golden. Right, so if nobody's got any questions, um, we're just noting that report, so I'll, I'll take that as noted. Thank you. Item seven, RIPPA application update. That's it. Back to you, Chris, again. I can be a bit briefer this time, Chair. Yeah. Uh, there haven't been any applications uh, received, perhaps unsurprisingly. Lovely. We'll, we'll note that brief um, and move to item eight work programme. Um, let's get that up on screen. So has anybody got any questions about the work programme? No, it's silent again. OK. So we'll note the work programme and move to uh, item nine. I haven't got any urgent uh, items, but Ruth uh, wants to give us an update from a recent LGA hybrid meetings webinar that she attended earlier in the week. Ruth, are you there? Hi, Chair. Thank you. Um, yeah, it was just um, to give members an update, really, um, following this webinar that I attended. It was um, organised by the LGA um, mm -hmm. and they were kind of talking about how councils had managed to kind of get over um, holding meetings and taking transparent and robust decisions during COVID. Um, so just briefly, um, they were talking about how important it was that in the majority of cases, councils have managed uh, to maintain transparent, robust um, decision making processes. Um, at the beginning, a lot of people were using kind of emergency powers in the constitution, but relatively quickly moved over to, you know, meeting uh, with members using various methods, Teams, Zoom, etc. Um, and I think for some committees like um, planning and licensing in particular, uh, maintaining public particip participation is really, really important. Um, and I think from some um, perspectives, the public perception of local government has kind of improved because we've kind of shown our adaptability uh, uh, to face the circumstances that we are facing at the moment. Um, there were ma ma many comments about how chairing virtual and hybrid meetings is, is challenging um, and the, the, the software and um, hardware issues and training issues that many councils have faced. Um, one of the things that we did to talk about was um, the fact that some places kind of pause their scrutiny functions um, to kind of concentrate on their core business, um, which Charlie did to a certain extent. Uh, but I'm pleased to say that we're back to our usual um, scrutiny activities now, uh, which again is an important function of um, checks and balances within within the council. Um, just a point to note um, that we are lucky in being an authority that has. Um, our IT department manage our devices for us. So members that have a kind of bring your own device um, set up um, have encountered more kind of technology issues than, than we have. Um, and, and personally, I really thank IT for all their support um, in getting hybrid meetings going because we would, we would have really struggled without them. Um, so moving forward um, in a positive way, um, a lot of councils are seeing a, a positive increase in attendance, um, both from members and from the public in meetings, um, viewing things on, um, on YouTube, etc. 
Uh, which is really positive um, and for some working members and those who live in more rural areas it's actually quite more convenient sometimes for people to dial in um, so you know hopefully moving forward um, that there may be options for for hybrid meetings to to kind of move forward although legislation would be needed from may 2021 um, the other things that we did note um, were that hybrid meetings do lack the opportunities for informal networking before and after meetings, which is is needed sometimes for some issues and sub, for some specific committees. Um, and there were also some concerns about not all members um, having to kind of or, or a lot of experience or confidence with um, digital um, iPads and, and Zoom, etc. Um, and the importance of members feeling confident and being able to contribute to decisions, um, which is something moving forward. But um, just to highlight that we are moving forward with the Council Chamber project and fingers crossed by May 2021, we will be able to webcast um, and have our own microphone system in the Council Chamber. So just very quickly, I just thought it would be useful for Governance Committee just to be aware of that. Thanks. Ruth, thank you. And I think we'll all agree about um, thanking IT to uh, keeping us up to date um, and being up to date before hybrid and uh, virtual meetings came on board even. Um, I see that Chris has got his hand up. Is that? Um, yeah. Thank you, Chair. I think um, I just want to, to add to what Ruth said, and I think it, it, it typically, in Ruth's typical style, she's kind of skipped over some of the things that I think are, are very important, which is um, it, it, it surely, uh, and working closely with South Ribble to, to bring these matters forward, um, but the officers in democratic services in IT have um, moved heaven and earth to ensure that we can have these hybrid and remote meetings. And and she met, Ruth did mention at the outset, you know, that, that some councils are still using urgency powers, um, which don't, from my perspective on decision making, whilst they're satisfactory, they're not really ideal and don't go to a democratic or robust and resilient decision making process. So I do think um, Democratics and uh, IT should both carry a lot of credit for the work that they did uh, in ensuring that we could continue to deliver, you know, the, the public, the, the correct level of public engagement and public decision making. But I think it's also worth just commending members as well who embraced it. This is this has been a new world for all of us um, meetings in this way. and. The chairs in particular, and I'm not just saying that because it's you, Deborah. Um, <laughs> but you know, it, it, but the chairing these meetings, participating in these meetings, is very difficult. Chairing them is even harder, um, and I think it, it says a lot for the attitude of members at Chorley Council um, that not only do we just get um, members of the committee attending our um, hybrid and remote meetings, but we get non-members attending as well regularly and still seeking to participate in. Um, the decision making process. So I, I do think that we should we shouldn't, you know, dislocate our shoulders, patting ourselves on the back or anything. But I think we should look round and think, well, you know, we've, we've done a lot of hard work this year across the board. Um, and it's important, I think, for the governance committee to be aware of this because it does go to, um, you know, the, the, uh, the governance framework, the decision making processes of this council. And I, I, I was really gratified when Ruth was telling me, you know, it could, I mean, bless it, she's very good at presenting in this way without wanting to sound patronising but she was so excited after she was telling me about it because we were you know at the forefront of what was being done nationally this wasn't just a you know a Tumpney Aitney um, local meeting this was the LGA it was a national mm. thing and and we were at the forefront of actually delivering um, uh, meetings in this way so yeah I, I think there's a lot of credit to the organisation should be uh, accepted. Mm. Yeah. Thanks Chris yeah and thanks Ruth and I think I think you know, just shout up. But does everybody agree that uh, you know that all credit to IT and democratic services for these services that we already we already had, but we didn't really know how to use them as fully as we have done in the last few months. Um, we've all learned how to use Teams, and we've all learned how to log in and get onto meetings. Um, so, yeah, it's been yeah, brilliant. I think yeah. it's been good. I think it's been brilliant. Yeah, and maybe we should make a note of that in the in the minutes if that's all right, Ruth. Yes, yeah, thank you, Chair. Tony, yeah. you've got your hand up. Is that right? Tony! <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, no, no, I'm come back now. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Um, <laughs> we're very, very fortunate to have a kind of democratic services organisation as we have in Chorley. 
um, Ruth and her team have made it very easy for us mm. during this pandemic mm. in being able to keep contact with our constituency. And I can not praise the team enough for the help they've given, given me and I presume given other members of the council as well. Mm. Agreed. Yeah. Um, I've got uh, Councillor Franz. Yes, Chair, I'd just like to comment. I think every credit as well to IT. Uh, wherever there's been a difficulty in meetings I've chaired, they've always managed to get round it and help councillors. And uh, yes, yeah, strange times, but every credit, we've, we've worked very well around it, I think. And that's mm. a, a great deal of is to quality officers. Thank mm. you. Well, thank goodness, Councillor France, we haven't had any difficulties in this meeting. <laughs> so uh, it's all gone quite smoothly. So if we've got nothing else, um, I'd like to close the meeting, if that's OK. Yes, yeah. and thank you. Matt. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers. Thank, thank you. you, Chair. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you, Chair. Mm -hmm.